Hey there, friends. So I am doing a little Sunday project right now, and I thought I would share with you what I've got going on. Um, I'm making a Lenormand board, a Grand Tableau board, um, because I don't have a reading space large enough. Um, <laughs> Uh, this is going to be tricky. Um, I don't have a reading space large enough for doing a Grand Tableau, and, um, I also don't know the houses all that well, so I thought this would be an interesting... There's that word again. Um, I thought this would be a good way to kind of make that happen. So... Um, what I'm doing right now, I'm using a foam board, foam core board, um, and I'm just using my largest Lenormand deck, because I feel like that's the best way to do this, um, and just trying to get a sense of where things will go. I think that I'm going to use the 9x4, um, layout, because I generally like that more. Um, so basically what I'm doing right now is just um, figuring out what the spacing is going to be. Um, and then um, this is a somewhat ambitious project for me because I'm not that crafty a person. But um, uh, what the plan is, is to sort of, uh, this is, by the way, this has um, lines on it. This is a grid. This foam core board has a grid on it. So um, what I'm planning on doing once I have the lines mapped out is uh, using some Mod Podge to glue um, string down onto the grid that I decide is right. And, um, and then, uh, um, paper over it with with brown craft paper so that there'll be little it'll be a little raised um grid for the cards and then just to hand write on the uh on the overall thing so um that's the plan for now so what i think i'm gonna do this um so the hard part of this is a i have to do it on the floor because i don't have a space quite large enough for it you can see my ugly carpet in my apartment. The thing, you know, one of the reasons why I don't make things <laughs> by hand frequently is that I am a perfectionist. And perfectionism is not conducive to this sort of thing, right? Because theoretically, things are going to be imperfect by nature because... We are not machines. Um, but I think, you know, in this case, that's about all um, all there is to do. Um, I guess I could have gotten, like, a spread cloth, you know, and bought one and um, uh, put it, you know, glued it to a foam board. But um, this felt more appropriate somehow. Um... So I'm going to mark out my grid, more or less, and then I will come back when I start gluing things down. So back in a bit. All right, so I've mapped out my grid and I've cut some string. And now I'm going to try to make this work. Um, using the string and some glue. Um, I'll start with one of the short ones. And just dipping the glue or the string in the glue. Like a child's art project. Ouch. Um...
And um, recognizing that this may be messy, and that's fine, because ultimately, um, this is going to get covered. So just sort of applying the string. <clears throat> this is messy. So a, um, a saner person than I would likely would likely um, think to do this on newspaper. But I am saying full steam ahead. And I'm doing the, um, the shorter, um, lines first, primarily, to make it easier on myself. Whoops. No, that is right. So all of this messiness I will have to sort of wash away at a certain point because it'll make it lumpy. But again, this is in the pursuit of abandoning perfectionism, so... Um, so that's what I'm doing, and then I'll come back and show you what this looks like in the next step. Alrighty, so I'm about to do the last cross line. Um, and I figured I would just show you what that looks like. The thing that I would say about um, doing whatever is going to overlay another row, so if you do, I mean, you could weave these if you really wanted to, but I don't think it's going to be that physical. But whatever um, is going to lay on top of another row, I wouldn't drain, I wouldn't wring as much of the glue out of, um, because um, less of it or there, there are going to be places where it hangs over the other row, the other string row, where where it's going to need more glue because it's not touching the surface of the board directly. Um, so that's all there is to it. This actually was a bit easier than I thought it was going to be. So. Um, I just had to check to see if I screwed up somewhere. Um, it's not quite as perfect size-wise um, as I hoped, but um, I think it'll be okay. Because this is really just, in, in essence, you don't even really need to do this part um, because the, 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 you could draw it on later once you cover the board, um, or you could you know do it any number of ways. The reason that I did it this way um, was partly uh, because it, like the little, the little wall that it creates, I figured would just help keep things neater. Um, but there are definitely places where a cell, looking at this as a spreadsheet, where a cell is um, maybe smaller than its others. But again, I used my largest deck to do this, um, thinking that uh, that would make more sense um, because I don't really use it that much. and. Uh, it would give me space to write the house names later. So I'm going to let this dry a little bit, and then I'm going to come back and cover it um, once it's... It doesn't need to be completely dry, but it needs to be dry enough that I'm not going to move it around. So uh, I'm going to let that happen, and I'll be back later. 
All right. So um, things are dry-ish. Um, dry enough that they're sturdy enough for me to continue. So I am going to move on to phase two. Um, now, you may be able to tell, um, and the perfectionists among you like me um, may may uh, have noticed it, but the, um, the grid is not quite as perfect. Um, it progressively gets smaller as you go down. Um, but again, we're, you know, the, the, I don't want to rip it apart and start again. I, these come in packs of two. So, um, if I really need to, um, do it again for my, for my sanity, I can. Um, this time I did put down newspaper because, um, there will be drips. Um, this is going to be messier than the last one was. Um, so I was going to use, I bought a roll of brown craft paper, um, to do what I'm about to do, but actually, um, I found that I had some brown tissue paper, um, which I think may suit my needs for this a little better. Um, because um, it's thinner. So what I'm going to do right now is just throw down some of this stuff um, relatively gently. Again, it's not super dry or super strong, so I'm going to try to be both liberal with it and gentle. Um, and I'm just going to use this brown tissue paper um, in sort of torn chunks um, and lay it down and essentially just sort of go over it. Um, with with the glue um, and then and it doesn't need to be perfect um, in fact this is the place where lack of perfection is a good thing um, because it should look a bit rustic um, in its way and uh, sort of uh, handmade. Um, now, if you haven't seen this stuff before, it does dry clear. I bought the matte um, stuff because I wanted it not to be glossy. I may water this down a little bit. Um, time. I will probably water it down because I can see myself using this whole can. Although you don't need a lot, um, theoretically. Yeah, see, the nice thing about tissue paper is that it really conforms to what's underneath it, especially once it gets kind of damp. Um, and uh, this glue definitely makes it damp. And um, it's easy to tear. Um, So theoretically, I could move the string if I wanted to because it's not 
Um, as you can see, it's not set that much that it's not gonna come up. Um, and I'm being very messy with the tissue paper too, because I kind of want it to look, um, I want it to look that way. Um, I am not by nature a crafty person, although I do find such projects relaxing. Um, my, the thing about craft in general, in my experience, is that it does require a certain kind of um, devotion to lack of perfection. Um, <laughs> Which is partly one reason why I'm not going back and fixing the the thing. I mean, it really is meant to, to give... Um, some structure just to sort of... The reason I chose to do... The, I mean, again, like I said when I was putting down the string, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do anything. Um, but the reason I decided to is, A, I thought it would be cool looking. B... Um, it gives a little bit of, um, uh, organization, uh, subtly. And C, it just seems like a fun project. Which is ultimately the point. And I'm not minding that the, the tissue is ripping because what I'm going to do is just slap on a little piece. And because the tissue is so thin, um, you can, it may, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it will, you know, there will be different layers of it. And if it hangs off the edge, that's fine. The edge here I haven't gotten to. Um, that's totally all right. Um, so I'm going to go water this down just to touch the glue and continue on and I'll come back when I'm on the next phase. All right. So you can see the whole thing's covered. It's still going to dry, but, um, it, it has different shades and textures based on how much, how many layers went on top of it. And, there's, a, there's um, spaces where there's only one layer and there's spaces where there's more, which kind of looks cool. So I'm going to let it dry completely now, or at least until it's totally um, see-through. And then um, see if I want to add more, if there's spaces where it ripped and I didn't notice. Um, trim the edges. I'm actually probably going to do the back too, so I can use the back um, for other formations or larger spreads, um, but not with the string. And then once it's all dry, give it another coat and um, write the houses um, on it. So that's the next step, or those are the next steps. So more soon. All right, well, this took a few days longer <laughs> than I thought it would. Um, not uh, purely because of the, the work, um, partly just because life is busy and things don't go according to plan, right? Um, so this is more or less the finished product. Um, it was sort of a, an interesting an interesting journey getting this done, um, <laughs> but it looks all right. So the only thing that really kind of um, was problematic in the making of this um, was that the um, the reason I chose like foam core was that I figured it would be um, less susceptible to you know bend with really wet glue. Um, <clears throat> but what I discovered after doing the first side, and I actually did the back too, without this on it, but, um, what I discovered was that when I woke up the next morning, it had completely bowed. It was, you know, almost a C. Uh, so I thought, well, that's not going to work. Um, but, uh... It, you know, I um, when I did the other side, the opposite. So I figured that the, doing the other side would actually even it out, but it um, it bowed the other way. 
<laughs> so, um, uh, you know, um, I, I did a couple more coats of the Mod Podge, which actually I really like the way it looks. I mean, it's, it's nice and matte. It doesn't have any gloss to it at all. Um, I am really fond of the way the tissue paper came out. Um, I think it looks kind of cool in that regard. Um, so, you know, there's still a little bit of give. There's a little bit of a bow. It's not the end of the world. Um, if I were, if I were going to do this again, what I might do is put a layer of the undiluted glue first, um, and hope that that created a seal on the, um, on the surface of the foam core. Uh, and because it's see-through, I would still be able to see the grid, but, um, that would prevent it from, from bowing, uh, you know, and then doing layers with the string and then doing layers with the tissue paper and the diluted, um, the diluted glue. Cause I'm wondering if it was the water in the glue that, cause I added a fair amount, um, a tablespoon or so, uh, into it. So, uh, I, I don't know, you know, I mean, it's the nature, like I said at the beginning, um, this is not in the pursuit of perfection as much as I, uh, had moments of perfectionism within it. It's a, you know, it's a prac, it's a practice tool. So it's not ultimately worth crying over. Um, the other option would be to use something that won't bow like wood or, uh, or plastic or something like that. But, you know, for something that was ultimately relatively, um, meant to be affordable, uh, I think I wound up spending more than I thought <laughs> I was going to, um, because I ended up using a whole eight ounce jar of the Mod Podge, um, on this and needing to get another one, uh, which I, I wasn't expecting. I thought that would be plenty. And I didn't, you know, I wasn't like a waster either. I, you know, I didn't use more than I needed to. Um, so, uh, that, that was one thing that was annoying about it. Um, but not, you know, not the end of the world. Um, another thing that I wasn't expecting was, you know, and I showed this earlier in one of the earlier steps, somehow my grid got out of whack, and as it went down, the squares got smaller. Um, the card still fit, um, but what I found was that I had to put the title above the line rather than below it, which was initially my intent, um, which on the top actually is fine. As it gets down, you almost want another row to separate it the way you would have a title row in a spreadsheet, but um, actually, why don't I because I haven't even laid out cards on it to see how it looks, so, um, we'll let us do that. Um, but again, the point was to be able to see the name of the house. Um, I don't, I don't, my tripod isn't tall enough to have, uh, this up on a table, so that's why I'm down on the floor doing this. Um, but, um, despite that, it may be a little counterintuitive, you know, if, if you bought this, you know, and you thought, why is the title below in the same box as the as the card above it but um it is not the end of the world again i did the um the nine by four it just seemed cleaner to me um and uh you know once you know the order of the cards which i don't um you don't even need this so who cares because on the other, on the back side, you know, you can go ahead and do the normal one. Well, it's a little, the board itself is probably a little small for um, the 8 by, what is it, 8 by 4 plus 4. The key is going to be not to confuse myself because I'm already looking at the, the title below the name, not above it. Um, so, but yeah, there. Um, so, it, you know, it looks pretty good. Um, I used a um, metallic marker. I used a green metallic marker, the Winsor Newton. Um, that I just had um, from another edging deck project, and um, uh, wrote the name. I I had planned on right, you know, again the the best laid plans. I thought I might, you know, write them really nicely in cursive, and the uh, tip of the marker is too thick, 
and the board itself too textured to, uh, for that to work. Um, but from, I don't, I don't know if you can see it in the video because it is, you know, about four feet away from the board itself, but within that you do, I can read them pretty clearly from here. Um, and this does fit on top of a small, like, uh, end sort of table that I use, um, for things like this. So, you know, it creates a nice sort of board on top of it. Um, so that's, that's been this project. Um, you know, idle hands, right? So it was interesting to, to do this. And now, um, uh, you know, I, <laughs> I'm laughing because I went through all this work for a system I'm not yet sure I'm any good at. Um, and, uh, you know, practice, 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 right? I would say that to anybody starting out with tarot. Um, I, I, like I said many times, I have to keep reminding myself that I've been reading tarot for 17 years. I've been reading Lenormand or trying to for three or four months, uh, and not consistently because I get frustrated with it really easily. Um, I've been reading a lot about it too, um, <laughs> and being entertained by the kind of, um, uh, snarky fighting of the, the different schools and the the sort of somewhat pedantic attitudes about different systems but um you know the thing that i'm coming away with is that there you know there's no um <laughs> there's no ruling body that says no you can't do this if you don't do it this way so um i think i think as i go along um like anything else, you learn the rules and then you work with them. You put every, you know, you put the, you learn the rules and then you put the books away and you do it and you see if you like it and you see if it works for you. And if it doesn't work for you, then you either find another road or you find another system. Um, so, uh, anyway, um, that's, that's this project I wanted to share with you. I really, really do like the way it came out for all the, the, um, struggles <laughs> and the uh, unplanned uh, paths that it took me on to get it done. Um, and um, I don't know. It, you know, I, but the nice thing about it is that it it's not a cloth. You know what I mean? So I can lay this on a smaller surface and um, I don't have to worry about having a table that's large enough for it. Um, so if I were going to do a reading, a video reading for someone, I'm, you know, I'm nowhere near that either. Um, but if I were going to, I'd probably, you know, have to find a way to get my tripod higher uh, so that I could actually sit in a normal way. But, um, that's that. So, uh, I hope this was a fun little look into this little project and, um, be well.